the, the backup kicks in. We're good to go. In my spirit, in my spirit, as I was saying, is a resounding word to make the Lord our banner. Make the Lord our banner. It's not out of obligation, nor is it out of obedience. It's out of choice and recognition. When the Lord truly is our banner, what do people see? Do they see us or the banner? I submit to you today, they don't see us. They see the banner. You see, to make the Lord your banner is to become invisible. You become invisible, and all they see is him. In my spirit is this thing every time I pray. In my spirit is, make the Lord your banner. The Lord is my banner. And if he is my banner, I am invisible. And one only sees the banner, not me. To make him your true banner is for people to see him, not you. All too often through the course of life, we've been trying to get people to see us, to hear us. We say that all the time, don't we? They can't hear me. They won't listen to me. It's not you they should listen to. You should be invisible if the Lord is your banner. During this day and age, the time that we live in, to have the Lord as your banner, then there is no us. There's only Him. Which means your life is an absolute conformance to Him. Imagine Him. Imagine yourself serving absolute royalty. that you really served sent out into a land as a representative you wouldn't say anything of yourself but everything you said and did would represent the one who sent you if the Lord is truly our banner then surely nobody sees us but they see him if he truly is our fulfillment we truly will be full of him, not ourselves. Within ourselves, we don't accomplish too much. But with him, we accomplish all things. With him, there are no obstacles. Because all things are underneath his feet. So if he truly abide in us, then all things are truly under our feet. But it's not us, it's him. You're the vessel. You are the vessel sent out into the earth for the message. Isn't that awesome? If he is our banner, we are invisible. Now I want you to listen carefully at language from here on out. Listen to people talk. Don't judge them. Just listen. Take note. You'll hear statements like, Listen to me. Right? We all do that. You'll hear somebody try and press their knowledge. That will save a person upon them. But in truth, the person needs to see the Father through us. And that's, that can happen through Christ. We ought to be invisible. The Pharisees, the chief priests, the ones who knew about the Torah, the Pharisees. In today's world, that would be the bishops and the Christians and some political figures and some people of influence gathering together saying, we're going to lose our nation if this or that happens. Look what they did. They had to stand against Jesus Christ and they were fighting what were they fighting for they were fighting for what their place in the world and their nation their place and their nation this is what they were fighting for 
Did the player go poof? Go figure the player went poof. Are you kidding? I'm going to say it one more time. I'm going to read this whole thing again. Can you guys hear me okay now? And that's something, anytime there's something impressed upon any individual from the Lord, all the technology begins to fail. Of course, we knew that we knew those things happened. I'm going to read it to you one more time. It says, John 11:45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary, and had seen the things which Jesus did believe. on him but some of them went their ways to the pharisees and told them what things jesus had done then gathered the chief priests and the pharisees a council and said what do we for this man doth many miracles if we let him thus alone all men will believe on him and the romans shall come and take away both our place and nation Did it go away again? Are you guys kidding? It went away again. You have to be joking, right? It's a joke. <laughs> oh. Now, these are independent streams. Sure shouldn't, it should never have a collective outing. Oh, my goodness. Folks, again, that's John 11, 45 through 48. John 11, 45 through 48. So here's what happened in John 11, 45 and 48. Many of the Jews came to Mary and saw miracles of Christ. Some of the folks, some of the folks went back to the Pharisees and told the Pharisees about the miracles that Jesus did. Then, a council was formed of the Pharisees and the chief priests. And they said, what do we do? This man is doing miracles. And if we don't do anything about it, people will believe on him. And the Romans are going to come and take away both our place and nation. You guys understand that so far? They said, if Jesus continues to do these miracles, people will believe upon him. And the Romans will come and take away our place and nation. This is what the Pharisees and the council said. To salvage their nation. To salvage their placement. Of importance, that place does not mean a geographical location. Placement in that respect. That means their stature, what they have achieved thus far, their relationships and everything else. And so they have to stand against Christ to save their own nation. Do you guys understand that thus far? That same thing is happening again. It's happening again. Because, see, people are saying, There's, <laughs> your computer crashed, Paula? Mm. Well, that just implies I better make this one a long journey. Maybe we will talk tonight about this. But I know it's controversial. I know it'll make people angry. I already know that. But it needs to be said. It needs to be said. You see, they parted company with Christ and sought to kill him for the sake of their nation and their placement. We're doing that in America. Getting rid. Where do you see the name of Jesus on any building? Anywhere in the public, anywhere in this country, in America. Where do you see our Lord's name? You don't see it anywhere, do you? You don't see it. Christmas was associated with his birth. What happened to that? It's all gone. It's all gone. Why? 
Because they said the same thing. If people believe in Jesus, we won't be a nation anymore. So what did they do? What did they do? Because I'm, I'm going to tell you something. Israel made a terrible mistake with that Pharisee mindset. All they had to do was call out on the name of the Lord. But here's what really happened. See, the Pharisees constitute those individuals who have poured their life into the development of a nation. At that point, the nation of Israel was the result of the work of the Pharisees. The agreements and politics they had with the Romans. They made a type of peace with the Romans. Just as the Christians are doing now in their churches. Because you know what they're saying in their churches? Well, we can't say this or that. Or we'll lose the church. We'll lose our stature among the other churches. We can't tell people the exact truth because we will become unpopular America has done the same thing they say we can't do this or that because the other nations will take advantage of us so I'll tell you this if the Pharisees and the chief priests were afraid of the army machine called Rome or people worried today about opposition in part the Obama administration did what they did because they said hey we can't fight all the Islamic individuals in the Bush years the same thing happened with those who live in the United States hey we need the favor from these generals and so we have to go after and, and go over there and appease these people so what I'm telling you through an act of peace and through an act of saving a nation Evil, evil was born in the time of Christ. This very mindset that they spoke to the people about losing their nation and their placement made them part company with Christ and they sought to kill him. They said, we're going to have to kill him. We're going to have to kill him or we're going to lose our nation and our placement. Their good relationships with the Romans. So what does that tell you? They feared the Romans and never believed in God. You cannot be in this earth and fear what man can do and say you believe in God. That's impossible. You have to know something to believe in it. And to know the Lord, God Almighty, is to know he is the Almighty, which is to have fear of no one. They put Christ to death to save their nation. What have you seen these countries do? They did it again. Under what spirit are they operating? The Pharisee spirit. Did the man of perdition manifest in the time of Christ? Yes, through Judas Iscariot. The son of perdition did manifest. And what did that son of perdition do? He betrayed. The Messiah. I tell you, that's the Antichrist spirit. And if you look around in the world, it's happening again. You see, what you haven't figured out is this. The son of perdition was spoken of once when Jesus walked the earth. The son of perdition is spoken of again when when Jesus is about to arrive, the son of perdition was here before Christ came. The son of perdition is here again before Jesus comes again. It is the son of perdition that stands against Christ. And it was the son of perdition who stood against Christ. The influences of the son of perdition were in the Pharisees. I'm trying to get you to see a pattern, something very real. And the pattern was the Pharisees wanted to save their nation and their placement among the Romans. 
And so they betrayed Christ. They refused to let people speak his name, didn't they? What has our country done? The same thing. They have enacted the exact same thing. I'll tell you this. For Christ is suppressed, the Father's blessing is not over that place, period. The Father's blessing is over you. Because no matter what the Pharisees thought, the gospel still went out. The same time set that was back then is right now, folks. Can you see that? They sold out. They sold out. For the sake of money, they put Christ to death. And they thought it was a good thing for the nation itself. They will only see the truth of it after it's done. Folks, do you see, do you see the similarities between now and then? That means the opposition of Christ is in the earth right now and working. Now I ask you this. How many people, and you have to watch their language. How many people are doing the same thing? How many people are so worried about the placement of this nation? And this, the placement would be the nation's name, its reputation. How many people are worried about that so much that they're saying, they're literally saying, Jesus can come later, but let us restore the nation first. But they're doing this by their own hands. See, I don't believe in that separation of church and state nonsense. It has not worked, and it's not working, nor will it ever work. Because this earth and everything was created by the Creator. And what they're doing is worshiping the creation more than the creator. And they're wallowing in pride in their own accomplishments. And we all know that God resists the proud. They're proud of what they built. They say it every single time they get on TV. We have done this. We have done that. We have done this. Never once giving credit to the Almighty. Never once giving credit to the Lord. Never saying it is the Lord that allowed us to do this or to do that. Never once. The sad part is Christians are now joining in with it. Saying yes we have accomplished this that and the other. And they're forgetting about Christ. You don't preserve Christ for Sunday. Or when it's convenient for the nation to do so. That's what this nation is doing. What good can come of that? The Father has already made decrees upon a nation who turns away from him. And I tell you this, the nation has surely turned away from Jesus of Nazareth. They can use the word God all they want if they cannot use the word Jesus. They have turned away from him because the power is in the name of Jesus. God does not identify but Jesus does, and they will not allow Jesus, that name, to be used. Because that's not the God they're serving. Which means the only reason this nation is spared is because of you. And I have to tell you, the falling away is underway. This nation is preserved only because of you. But now the Christians are falling away. Every single election the number of Christians diminishes. There is a new Christian that walks the earth now. One where Christ is not the foundation of it. But being nice is only the foundation of it. Let me tell you something. Being nice is not going to allow you to enter into the kingdom of God. You can do everything right in this earth. If Jesus is not the author and finisher of your faith, you can forget it. You don't belong to him. The devil himself appears as an angel of light, and an angel of light is very kind and accommodating. Niceness won't cut it. 
They're not teaching the word of God in some of these churches. They're teaching philosophies. In the other half is a how to get rich scheme. Can't you see the church has turned away? A lot of these places that call themselves churches have turned away from Christ. And now they are serving a false Christ. And they even blaspheme his name by using it. They use his name to justify their message. Their message, not the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You see, they were told to tell the gospel of Jesus Christ, not their own gospel. You don't go around telling everybody what works for you because everybody's situation is different. You tell the message of the established gospel. Can't you see what has happened? And then people foolishly think, well, nothing is going to happen to this nation or any other nation. Well, you're wrong. The nation's right now being preserved for prophecy. Now that the Christians are falling away, and they don't know it, because they're given over to a strong delusion, they don't know it. They are believing a lie. Because people in these prosperity churches and people in these churches that hardly mention Christ, people that refuse to go over the prophecies of our Lord, these folks who chain up the doors and they don't allow the wounded in, but all those who are in the house, they will get every dime and everything from them. Here's how you know one of those churches. Because if you were to ever leave one of these churches, they will tell you to your face, you've given up on God. They'll say, oh, you're going to give up on God. How can they dare to say that? Somebody out there knows what I'm talking about. Because they told you that same thing. That you're turning your back on God by leaving their church. Hmm. Can you see what's taking place? Don't you see what's happening? No wonder people aren't ready for. You know, in the in the um, tornado seasons. We know the season hits and everybody says, okay, and they go out to their business as usual. Then a tornado forms and everybody all of a sudden becomes very fearful. Why? When they were told, when they see the same thing year after year, why would they continue to be fearful every time tornado season hits? I'll tell you, it's called denial. If they, had, if they know that a tornado can do tremendous damage, they would be scared the first time, prepare for the second time, but always have in the back of their mind, they live in a place where a tornado can take everything they have. Thus, they would live their lives accordingly if they were wise, but they don't. You know what they believe? They always say the same thing. It will never happen to me. It's going to happen to somebody all the time, just like death itself. People really walk around thinking, it's not going to happen to me today. Yes, it's going to happen for somebody today. Just like the word of God. You know what they're saying? When they go off and teach their own doctrine, they're actually saying in their hearts, God will not do good nor evil. That's what they're saying in their hearts. They're saying that mankind has control of the word of God, and that's why they change it. That means they don't believe in God. If anybody has the audacity to change the word of God, they don't believe in the Father. They have no fear of the Father. And I'm telling you, this nation is being preserved because of you. But now those who believe in Christ are being beguiled and falling away. The falling away is underway. So what's going to happen to the nation when many fall away? large areas of this nation will be utterly laid to waste. That's what will happen. Your neighborhood is preserved because of you. If you so much as drive a car and other people drive it, it's being preserved because of you. 
The only time you really had car problems is when you began to complain about it. Haven't you found out this one principle? Whatever we complain about will break down. It will no longer operate by God's graces. Complain about something and watch what happens to it. See, the world will teach you complaining gets you more things wrong. If you start to complain about anything, it's going to break down. These are small principles. No wonder the Lord said my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We can't learn the most basic of his principles. Jesus told us everything. Jesus told us every single thing we ought to know, but we won't apply his principles. And that's something. And you're baited into complaining all the time. Right before destruction comes massive complaints. What do people do about the government right now? They're complaining. If you look at the history of this nation, I'm telling you that the media has twisted so many things. So many people have died trying to change a system into another man-made system. Not the Lord system, a man-made system that never worked. Have we come far in America? I tell you this, we have only learned to tolerate one another. That's what we have learned. But they're trading one man-made system for another. We learn to tolerate each other. Why? Because money is the focus. Money is the absolute focus of America. Money is. You will tolerate anybody for the sake of money, but you take the comforts away from everybody you really are. That will unfold. I just want to share that with you this morning, certainly about the Pharisees, how that they parted company with Christ to save their nation and their placement, to save their good name and their relationships with, a, with Rome. They parted company with Christ. They loved their country so much that they killed the Son of God for it. That same country that the Lord granted them, they killed the Son of the living God to keep it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Killed him. And, and point number two with the Pharisees, they never stopped until they achieved their goal. In other words, they always sent spies. Somebody was always reporting back to them. That's why we have things like the NSA. Because these things never stopped. There's always someone spying on anybody that believes. Just as in days of old, even in the time of Daniel, spies were sent to Daniel to report back to King Nebuchadnezzar and all these other kings that were under him. It's the same thing. Wherever one serves the Lord, you will have spies. The NSA is just a modern-day spy. There are people in COT right now, probably, of COT, the COT fold, that listen in the chat room. They're spies, too. They're not with COT. They're gathering information to attempt to take it down. Just to tell on us. Tattletales, I guess you could call them. But they're everywhere. That should never get you upset. Never. Because this is something that must be. It's been since the beginning. Spies. It will be until our Lord comes back. Don't waste your time digging those folks out. Understand that they are there. But if you're holy in all manner of communication, you have nothing to worry about. Daniel. Daniel stayed his course, didn't he? He stayed his course. They couldn't blame him for anything but serving the one true God. That's the only thing they had on Daniel. Was he disobeyed the king because he can't bow down to another God? See, if it ever became law that we have to bow to another God, I couldn't do it either. Could you? I wouldn't do it. To bow down means to you, you render space for. When you bow down to something, you're rendering space for that thing. I'm not going to render space for anything but my Lord and Savior. I'm not going to back away and give space to anything. 
except the Lord my God. But do you know how many people are backing away, giving space to situations, giving space to other people? They're bowing, submitting, surrendering before them. I'm not going to surrender to anything. Not going to surrender to any other deity. Just because somebody is evil and powerful, I'm not going to surrender to them either. When you bow down, that's surrendering everything to that one you bow down to. That's a full, that's full submission. Full surrender and submission of all of what you are. When the Bible says submit yourselves to earthly authority, that means be under subjection to earthly authority. Yes, we'll do that. Because God has placed people in every single system and every single kingdom. But I'm not going to bow down to them. I will never place anybody side to side with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I don't care what kind of doctrine it is. It will never be beside the words of my Lord. Because his words are holy. And everything else is man-made. There is no comparison between the two. All things of men will fade into nothingness. And the standards of the kingdom are much higher than the standards of the world. I want to share that with you guys because, as you can see, I'm fighting this falling away. I'm not one of those that says, well, they're going to fall away. Just say, you know, that's on them. No, no. The Bible was clear. Jesus was clear. He who has ears, let him hear what the Spirit says. For those who can hear, they will hear. And in order for them to hear, somebody's got to say it. So I'm not going to hold back because it's not popular to say. I'm not. I know this kind of speech is going to be deemed as dangerous in the future. So what? I'm not going to not say it. I'm not going to suppress my opinions either. I feel strongly and passionate about the words of our Lord, not the words of man. I don't get the chills from anything a man ever said. But I can feel the Holy Spirit from the gospel of Jesus Christ every single time. Nothing mankind has ever said gives me chills. Nothing. Even the acts of the apostles do not give me chills. None of them. But the gospel of Jesus Christ does. The love of my Lord does. His power and glory does. But nothing else does. Nor does anything else move me. What about you? Who are you giving space to in your life? What are you giving space to in your life? The Lord must be our banner. And if he is our banner, the world does not see us anymore. They only see him. Just like soldiers in a uniform, you don't really see the person, you see that uniform. You identify the individual. By his uniform. Thus people should look at us. And by the banner of God we wear. That we have. They shouldn't see us. But the banner of the living God. Upon us. Which means. We have conformed to all of his standards. And have truly died. To our flesh. We have become no one. And he receives all glory forever, not us. There will come a time when we will be glorified with him, but right now is the time to work. And I seek nothing for myself. His name must be glorified. His name will be deemed true and holy. Because that is the only thing to save, truly save the brothers and the sisters out there. Not me, not my name, his name, his established doctrine, his power, his glory. Not mine. I cannot help you. Your victory is reserved in Jesus Christ alone.
And the world must know this. The world has to know this. God bless you guys. I'm going to be on past balls here shortly. We're going to go silent until I pops on there. How about that? I can't yap too much. I'm going to be on his show yapping. I don't know what we're going to talk about. But I'm kind of charged up. Can you tell? Isn't it funny we had those interruptions? I can't believe that. I'll probably be back in about 15 minutes. So if Pastor Paul asks for me, I'll be ready at 1230 forward. He'll probably have me on at 1. Probably come on at 1. But I'll be ready at about 1230, 1245, okay? God bless each and every one of you. Stay tuned for Pastor Paul. It's coming up next here on CFT. I'm going to play this song one more time. It's three minutes and 38 seconds. Because I do like it. 